Hi everyone, I'm Mike Porowski. Uh, as uh, Mike mentioned before, I work at Harvey AI. I'm on the uh, security team there. We're building out a pretty strong program in-house and I'm specifically working on the detection and response function. Uh, today for my talk, I wanted to focus specifically on how we use network logs uh, to build proactive detections and keep our network safe, specifically because network logs are very difficult and I'm gonna get into why but there is a pretty standard paradigm in detection and response that typically treats network logs as a retroactive sort of investigation tool. You get your classic EDR alert, someone pops a shell, and then you go back to the network logs to figure out maybe what happened, where there are C2 servers involved, et cetera. So you use them really as like a secondary investigative tool. Uh, I challenge that notion. I posit that not only can they be really effective uh, primary indicators of compromise, but that they may actually beat uh, host EDRs and other like authorization type logs to the punch. Um, and I've actually seen that happen. I've been working on network logs for quite a long time in my career. Uh, but again, it's very difficult. And we're gonna get into why and how uh, using ClickHouse has really helped us do that. First, a very quick overview on what my job is. So uh, detection response, DNR for short, is essentially a game of log aggregation. We try to find all of the logging within our production environment and with, across all our perifer peripherals and ingest them into a centralized place, typically called a SIM. A bit of an overloaded term, but it's what allows us to schedule our queries, hunt for malicious behavior, um, correlate different alerts, build dashboards on top of, et cetera. So this is really like the central tool of uh, what a detection response function does within a security team. And uh, at the security team at Harvey, we like to say that if we do our jobs well and we protect this perimeter from evil Eve, we let all of the brilliant people at Harvey do their jobs, and at the end of the day, we all get to drink Mai Tais on the beach. After that, let's talk about um, what makes logs useful, and I'm putting network in parentheses because really this applies universally to telemetry across an environment, uh, but it is particularly important in networks because again, uh, it's difficult to do. So the three things we're really gonna index on here is identity attribution, service attribution, and quantifiable statistics. Uh, an easier way to think about this is who is doing something, for what purpose are they doing that thing, and how can we measure it and maybe compare it to historical data to provide some sense of, is this abnormal, is this standard practice, et cetera. We're gonna be focusing on Azure NSG flow logs. So these are your standard uh, source IP, dest IP, source port, dest port logging that uh, Azure provides natively. So you can see here I included the, the schema. So these are all of the fields that are included in these logs. and. Um, if you've been in the field of DNR, you'll look at this and think this is extremely useful. This is a lot of super interesting telemetry. We can break it down by MAC address, the flow tuples, the actual uh, firewall rule that was uh, used in this situation, the traffic decision, et cetera. So this is a really cool corpus of data that gives us a really uh, unique and deep visibility into our environment and what's going on inside of it. Uh, there is just a few problems with it, and that's what I'm gonna illustrate on this next slide here. So this is what a raw log of the NSG flow logs in Azure actually looks like. So I bleeped out some of our sensitive data here, but I want to call out a few things. First off, this is line 405,250. Uh, second off, this is not some large aggregation of all of our flow logs. If you, if you look closely at the path, that is the uh, path to the actual blob within the container that stores these. And each of the uh, within uh, square brackets is a, a variable that it can be substituted out. So there's a sub subscription ID, resource group, an NSG, a year, a month, a day, an hour, a minute, and a MAC address. So down to the very MAC address and minute, we have 405,000 lines of logs here. As you can see, they, they format it in block blob format. So every uh, whatever N traffic events gets stored in a blog and appended to the end of this file and every minute you just get an unbelievably large amount of data. And again, this is only one device, one minute. So we're trying to aggregate across our entire environment, and we also expect this data to grow uh, proportional to our customer base. So as uh, Harvey gets more customers, this data will only go up, and we expect to you know, have to handle this efficiently. Attempted to ingest this into our SIM of choice, which is Run Reveal. Uh, which is backed by ClickHouse, which is sort of how we got onto the platform. Uh, we use this table, just NSG flow logs. The implementation was simple, uh, just a standard view over top of the base log table. So this is basically just substituting the ClickHouse SQL query into a larger table, 
and seeing how far we can get with that. So the data we were dealing with here was like a, a daily uncompressed volume of about 5.4 terabytes. Uh, as you can see, one and a half million unique IP addresses, 20 to 40 million rows daily. We were unable to do basically anything that we wanted to do to get some you know, really effective use cases out of this. This is where most people get stuck, I would say. It's like, ah, this is not going to be useful. If we can key on the exact IP, source, desk, and port, and maybe within an hour time frame, we can parse through these logs. Uh, but doing any sort of aggregate statistics and proactive detections on this data becomes nearly impossible. So I just listed a few things that we would like to do with our network logs that uh, you know, just consistently met with uh, timeout errors or um, out of memory errors, uh, no matter how hard we tried. So top talkers or anomalous port usage or just volume spikes across different boundaries. Uh, all of this we couldn't really work on. So we worked really closely with uh, RunReveal and specifically their co-founder and CTO, Alan, which is, who is somewhere around here. Uh, if you haven't met him yet, introduce him. He's a brilliant dude and really helped us out here. Uh, this is actually really crazy. I want to spend a little bit of time on this slide. Um, but how we got to it is we worked very closely together to understand how we will be using these logs and, and how, we will, how exactly we will be using these logs, okay, which queries we'll be writing. Uh, and by understanding that, and by really understanding the domain, we can carefully select the indexes that we'll use in the, material, the resulting materialized view that will really give us those efficiency gains. So working with Alan, we picked primary indexes of the source IP, dest IP, and dest port. If you think back to that first slide, uh, that's gonna be the identity attribution. So this is the who, uh, excuse me. Source IP, dest IP is the who. The desk port is going to be the service or the purpose. So in networking, 443, we're going to be web, 53, DNS, et cetera. By extracting that triple, that we can get a decent amount of information about what's going on. Uh, Alan also added a, a secondary index called a projection in ClickHouse terms in this case, where we were basically pre-computing the aggregation of bytes sent and bytes received. So combining these, uh, these four fields together, we're effectively answering those questions of who is doing what and can we measure it and have some sort of quantifiable metric to compare today to yesterday to the day before. Uh, and as you can see here, putting all that together gave us a total compressed volume of 4.55 gigabytes. I wanna emphasize that is not daily, that is our entire corpus of network traffic and that is a compression ratio of over 1100. So we went from 5.4 terabytes daily to 1100 uh, to 4.55 gigs in total. That's absolutely nuts. And I don't know if anyone else in the space could get us that. Uh, so thanks, Run Reveal. Thanks, ClickHouse. That was awesome. Good stuff. Now, from my perspective onto the fun stuff, let me show you what we can do with this data once we get it all compressed and pretty like this. So the first thing I wanted to do is do a little bit of attribution uh, and enrichment here. So IP addresses can sort of get us to the who of what's going on, but they don't get us all the way there because they're difficult to look at. You have to go back to DNS or IP tables and figure out what exactly these are doing. So I started toying with some of uh, ClickHouse's, um, ClickHouse's feature sets here and saying maybe if I could just manually define a few of our top level networks, uh, we could just do a simple little naive approach of here's the range of a network, here's the range of a subnet. Does this IP address lie within that range? If yes, we have a label for it. If no, uh, label it other or something like that. And this worked, this got us pretty far. And I was actually kind of surprised about this because I've tried this elsewhere. And again, impossible in any other data set because uh, it's essentially a, you know, a very long if else statement happening at query time. But doing this little bit of enrichment uh, got us a really pretty graphonograph like this that's uh, telling us um, volumes across boundaries. We can limit it to um, specific ports, specific volumes. Uh, we can know which services are talking to what. And, and this gives us like a really good high level snapshot of what our network looks like, what the visibility at Harvey's, uh, Harvey's environment looks like. I wanna highlight how I expanded this really quickly. And this is just a big thank God for LLMs moment. So this is about as far as I got manually. And then I started to think, hmm, I wonder if any of the standard uh, big time LLMs can handle this. So what I did was I stopped filling in the ClickHouse SQL and I just started filling in the comments of this is the VNet and this is the subnet and this is the, the CIDR value of the IP range. I wonder how far ChatGPT or Claude, whichever one I used, could do it. And I wanna show you the result of that. 
six of those lines. So that's awesome. Really happy for LLMs. But that's our entire network. I was able to download a JSON of uh, you know, the, the Terraform project defining all of our networks and subnets, uh, have them translated and expanded into ClickHouse SQL, and have every single IP address that comes through that pipeline compared to these numbers. And that's what leads to some really cool, uh, first off, visualizations and, and, and tables, but also high fidelity detections. Uh -oh. So this is just a, a simplified result of what we're looking at here. I know I'm throwing a lot of data at you, but what's really important to notice is rather than looking at a big table of random IP addresses and ports, we have uh, human readable names for the network, the subnet, source and destination, the port they're going to, and how much volume. So this is sort of the stuff that was fueling that Grafana table I showed you before. Um, Really cool, really useful, a good summarization of what's going on in the environment. But we can actually take this one step further, and this is what gets us to a really effective network threat detection. So if you can store this data, uh, let's say at a staging table, or you kind of iteratively run this query once an hour, once a day, what have you, then you can query on top of that table, so sort of like a meta query on your pre-aggregated data. And that's when you can do some really simple but powerful statistics on what does today look like compared to the last seven days? And is there a statistical anomalous spike? This next table is here. So I ran exactly that. Uh, and this is all within the query time. So I'm aggregating about seven days worth of data going all the way from the, you know, the, the 5.4 terabytes daily down to this little table summarized day to day, um, what happened yesterday compared to the week prior. And so now we can look at things like the volume today was, what the historic was, and what the percent change of that was. Now we can set you know, fairly simple filters. We only care about things with a 50% increase in volume. And let's say we only care about any sort of uh, volume above a megabyte. We're not too worried about 834 kilobytes crossing the network. So we can limit that to here. And that gives us about four alerts per day. And that's a really fantastic capability to go from that massive table that we saw at the beginning down to here, something entirely digestible and uh, a really significant outcome for keeping a company secure from the network layer. So that's really all I got. Thanks for listening. I hope you found it interesting and cool.